what's up you guys this is minister williams i am back for our encouragement one-on-one -on -one video post so we're ending chapter 13 in this video so god be all the glory we're making it through and the subtopic for this one it should be pretty you know sweet sweet um in chapter 13 how to hear from god series the subtopic is god awakens our sp our spirit within us God awakens our spirit within us. The leading scripture is going to come from John 4 is 24. And it says, God is a spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Very important. And I love that this scripture is involved in this because I've been hearing this scripture my whole life. And I've heard so many different interpretations of it. And this one hit home home for me. So oh, going into it with discussion. We communicate with God through our spirit. Remember, we're tripart, spirit, soul, body. We're spirit beings with a soul and a body. God is a spirit, so we communicate with him through our spirit. We communicate with God through our spirit. Jesus said that we must worship God in spirit and in truth. Our spirit intu intu intuitionally senses God's presence and receives revelation when there is a better way to do something. So our intuition kicks in. Our spirit senses God's presence and receives revelation when there is a better way to do something. Everybody has discernment. It kicks right in and the Lord is letting us know, don't do that. Do it this way. Don't do it that way. Everybody has discernment. The mind receives head knowledge, but the spirit receives a deeper sense of knowing. So again, the mind receives head knowledge, but the spirit receives a deeper sense of knowing. The spirit man receives a deeper sense of the head knowledge that you have, which many people try to describe by saying it was just in my heart. You know, people say, oh, why this was on my heart to do it. You know, when this was on my heart, this is the revelation of that. There are things we know because we have learned them, but there are also things we know that we haven't learned because the Holy Spirit communicates them to us through our own spirit. Profound. Know a lot of things. Know a lot of information. But the Holy Spirit will give me what to say, how to say, how to break down. Even when I'm doing these videos, you know, even though I have have the information the Holy Spirit will give me a different revelation in my spirit. He will tell me what to say. You know, plenty of times I've spoken and given words um, of encouragement and they didn't, it wasn't from what I knew. It was from what God told me. So I understand this completely. And I'm sure a lot of y'all can say the same things, but that's how God operates. Our conscience is also part of our spirit man. Our conscience is part of our spirit man. When our spirit is made alive to the awareness of God, we can fellowship with him and receive answers from him through conscience and our intuition. Our spirit and soul should work together. Spirit and soul should work together and the body should act as a servant to both. Tripart, spirit, soul, body. The spirit and soul should work together. And the body should act as a servant. That's how it all comes together. When the body rules a person's mind and spirit, God's plan for that individual gets turned upside down. So when the body rules a person, the body rules a person's mind, flesh, works of the flesh, God's plan for that individual gets turned upside down. That's all the flesh. Jesus said, all of you must keep awake, give strict attention, be cautious and active and watch and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's Matthew 26 and 41. Jesus, Jesus was trying to get the disciples to pray with him. This is good because this comes up a lot, but they keep, they kept falling asleep. He was trying to prepare them for the temptation that was coming. He was saying, don't sleep, pray, don't fall asleep, pray, get up and do what I'm doing. 
because temptation is coming. And if you don't pray, you won't be strong enough to resist it. So he was telling them what to do. You're going to be tempted beyond what you can bear. If you don't pray. So this is what Jesus was telling the disciples. Don't fall asleep. You need to pray. You need to do what I'm doing. We need to be prepared for what's coming ahead. And if you don't pray, you won't be strong enough. You know, you're already not strong enough to handle what's coming now. So get up and pray. Do what I'm doing. He wanted them to do what he was doing. As Jesus prayed, an angel came and strengthened him. He was doing what the Father told him to do. And as he did, that, an angel came and strengthened him in spirit, enabling him to endure the temptation that was coming against him. But the disciples didn't pray. They slept and proved that the flesh is weak. They proved it. They proved it. Our spirit is willing to do what is right, but our flesh will not help us. Again, our spirit is willing to do what's right, but our flesh won't. It won't help. It won't help us. Our flesh will pull us under if we don't pray and ask God to strengthen us in spirit and to circumcise, which means to cut away our hearts to resist temptation. Important. Jesus didn't make decisions on how he felt. Feelings are a distraction. Jesus didn't even make decisions on how he felt. We know he was in a tough situation because he asked the Lord to let that cup pass him. Lord, let this cup pass me by, you know, but then he, he instantly surrendered to what he had to do. So Jesus didn't make decisions on how he felt or by what he thought, heard or saw. He's the one who said, Lord, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, your will be done and not mine. So he got weak, but he instantly, Lord, your will be done. That's how we should be. That's Matthew 26, 38 through 39. It wasn't that he didn't have desires just as we do, because he did. But he didn't walk, he didn't walk by his will, not his soul, not his feelings, not his emotions, not his thoughts. He walked by what he knew was right in his spirit. And that's the great thing about obedience. You got to be obedient no matter how you feel. You know what God told you to do. You know what the word of God says. So it's not about how you feel and your emotions and what you think the outcome is going to be. It's all about what thus says the Lord and his will. Not, not my will, Lord, but thine will, your will be done. Surrender. We need to live in a realm, of, a realm deeper than our bodies, deeper than our souls. We need to live in our deepest place, our spirit, which can communicate with the spirit of God and accurately hear the way we should go. Jesus made decisions out of this spiritual realm. We get in trouble when we don't make decisions out of our spirit realm. So make sure that the decisions that you make are in the spirit realm. Don't make them off of your your. Um, emotions, how you feel about it when you're over analyzing. Remember what you what the Lord is saying in your spirit, what's embedded in you. What take some time and think about it. What does my spirit say about this? Lord, what did you tell me about this? And snap right back into it. Lord, your will be done, not mine. Thine will be done. People who enjoy good life are though are those who walk with God and overcome problems by listening to the spirit who speaks to their heart. And that's profound. I can testify to that. Since I have gotten saved for real, since I have accepted the Lord as my savior, since I have been walking in obedience unto the father, I have begun to live the best days of my life. And once you do a thing, you continue to do it, continue to do it. It becomes easier and easier. So obey the father. I'm not saying this is not going to be temptations because he's going to actually do some stuff you don't want to do. But again, just do it. You know what he told you. You know what the word of God says. And you're going to begin to live the best days of your life. I'm telling you what I know. I would have never thought that my latter days would be as great as they are, in spite of the tragedies that have come and gone, my right now and the days 
from the time that I have really, truly got saved have been the best days of my life. And I'm looking forward to what the Father has for me the rest of my days here and the treasures in heaven. I'm looking for it all. Again, people who enjoy a good life are those who walk with God and overcome problems by listening to the spirit who speaks to their heart. They see things in the spirit. They understand the difference between thoughts from their soul and intuition from their spirit. You know the difference when it's you and when it's the Lord speaking. When that flesh rises up again, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And when you're walking with the Lord, you know the difference. You know um, his presence. You know when he speaks to you. It's, it's so familiar. You're so um, united with him. You're so in communion with him in fellowship with him that you know him. You know his presence. You know, that's what it is for me. I know when the Lord speaks to me. I know when he gives me something. And I know what the word of God says. And with that... It just, it, it becomes a part of your life. It's a part of my life, uh, my lifestyle to seek the Lord for guidance. It's a part of my lifestyle. You know, I'm so connected with the Lord. He will warn me when things happen or before something does happen. Like, it's just, it's a part of it. And it's a great thing because you don't want to live without the Lord. Ugh. It's cold, it's dark, it's lonely, it's miserable, it's uncomfortable. But the minute you accept him and receive him and let him lead and guide you, because that's what God wants to do. He wants to lead and guide us throughout this life. He wants to be uno number one. He wants to protect us. He wants us to provide. He wants us to succeed and he wants to strengthen us. And strengthen our relationships with him along the way. So God wants all good things for us. Again, they see things in the spirit. They understand the difference between thoughts from their soul and the intuition from their spirit. More and more, little by little, they are obeying the spirit of God and not yielding to the desires of their flesh. And they are enjoying victory in their everyday lives because of it. And I'm telling you, profound. My life is a whole testimony on it. The best days of my life have been since I got saved and got saved for real. Important. The only time we ever have a victory is when we go through things and learn how to hear from God. You have to go through to learn. Everybody is going to endure. As long as you're on this earth, you're going to go through something. But I would rather... Be with the Father who strengthens me and teaches me how to win through these things, how to lean and depend on Him through these things, then perish and let the enemy have his way because he wants me to die anyway. So I would rather have victory even through my hard times, through the Lord, with the Lord, by my side every step of the way. That is victory. That is victory. The only time we ever have a victory is when we go through things and learn how to hear from God. You got to go through to learn. Important victory comes when we say no to the flesh, die to self and do what God has said to do. No matter how I feel about it and no matter what anybody thinks, I'm going to obey the Lord. I'm going to do what he says. So you're going to die to the flesh. You're going to die to self. And you're going to obey the Lord no matter how you feel and no matter what anybody else says. Because you know what the Lord told you. You know what he told you you needed to do. You know which direction you should go in. You know what he told you to stop watching. You know who he told you to stop messing with. You know who he told you to cut ties with. You know. You know. Just do it. Just do it. Remember that. Just do it. Don't do what you want to do. Do what thus says the Lord and you'll be blessed for it. And remember, once you do something continuously, you do it over and over again, it becomes easier and easier every time you do it. Let obedience be one of those things. Let it be the top at the top of your list of things that you do continuously. Obeying the Lord, saying no to the flesh, denying yourself, denying how you feel. I ain't going to do what I, well, how I feel. I'm not going to handle this situation based off how I feel. I'm going to do what the Lord says. And you'll see the fruit of it. And God is pleased. The more and more you do it, he's more and more pleased with you. And he'll show you that. And it's to encourage you. To let you know 
that he is proud of you and to keep on keeping on in Jesus name. So take that with you. And they're closing in this chapter 13. We finally closed out of chapter 13. Chapter 13 was a very big chapter with so much information. David, the psalmist taught us how to see God's leading and saying, I call to remember my song in the night. With my heart, I meditate and my spirit searches diligently. That's Psalm 77 and 6. The next time you have a decision to make, the next time you have a decision to make, don't try and figure it out with your head. Don't rationalize it. Don't break because that's what we do. We're human. We try to figure it all out. That's not what you want. So the next time you have a decision to make, don't try and figure it out with your head. Go somewhere. Get still and let your spirit search diligently for God's voice. Commit your ears, hands, and feet to him in prayer. In Jesus' name. What does my spirit say about this? Lord, what, what should I do about this? And wait on him because he's going to answer you. Lord, I don't know what to do. I need you to lead me and guide me. And I don't want to do, you know, the wrong thing. But I need your help. Get quiet. Get still. And listen. Listen, and he will lead and guide you in Jesus' name. So this is the end of chapter 13. Um, next week, we're going to go into chapter 14. Great chapter. Great, great chapter. Um, if you missed anything in chapter 13, hey, I got all these videos posted so you can watch them at your own time, at your own pace. So if you guys want to give a donation, Cash App should be on here somewhere where you can get it and access it. You guys have any prayer requests. Send them to the ministry's email, Powerhouse Ministry 2020 at yahoo.com. You guys get into these lessons, take them seriously, take this information and don't just listen to it, apply it. Information is useless if you just get it and not apply it, not use it. It's, it's pointless to even gain it because you're not using it. God wants us to apply everything that He leaves for us, His Word. The written word, the rhyme of what he tells us and how he speaks to us through other people, through books, whatever. Apply to your everyday life because you know it's from God and you want to do one day the trumpets are going to sound. One day the archangel, all those things. Remember in First Thessalonians, one day the trumpets are going to sound and the believers are going to know. I'm going to know that everything that I have done has been worth it. Because my father is coming to get me and I'm going to be with him forever. In Jesus name. Stay prayerful on the journey y'all. This is Minister Williams in a mouth.